I think that's the end of 3, 2. Sorry. Yep, that's the last thing we're doing in 3, 2. So we're going to jump into 3, 3. Sorry, 13.3. I think 3, 3 is something in derivatives, regular derivatives. You certainly can. Your, your book should still have chapter 3 inside of it, unless you got really angry. <laughs> so there's a few reasons that I'm not working out some problems. One of them is, it's in your book. It's not terribly uh, difficult to do that problem. And uh, it will let me talk about things that are more interesting. So we can spend time talking about other things. I think we may have a little extra time at the end of a quarter. It's a little hard to tell right now, but we may have some extra time at the end where uh, I can talk about different topics in calculus. I could either talk about how, why the limit of the Riemann sums is an integral. That's one thing that a lot of people want to know about. Where Usually in Calc 1, I don't have enough time to explain all that. So we can take one or two classes and talk about why that works. So use the intermediate value theorem, fundamental theorem of calculus, and other fun stuff, and prove why the limit is the integral. How dx, or where dx comes from, comes from the limit of the delta x's when they get very small. So that's one thing. I don't want to talk too much about Calc 4, because then you won't have anything to talk about in Calc 4. Uh, so I can go back and explain that from Calc 1, or I can talk about more about real analysis or complex analysis, which is calculus on complex numbers, complex valued functions, which is not far off from vector valued functions, because you basically have two components in complex functions, a real and an imaginary. So it sort of relates to what we're doing. Uh, so you can think about that. You don't have to answer right now. I also don't know how much time we have. So depending on how much time, we can talk about different things. And generally, I'll put a bonus question on your final based on what I talked about. None of it will probably be inside the book. So I'll have to give you my notes and maybe uh, figure out some alternate resource, uh, written resource to look at. Don't worry, I'll make sure it's open source and free. So you won't have to go and buy another book in the last week of class. So we're going to do arc length in space now. So we'll talk about what is uh, length of a curve, which is things we've done before. So if we go back to if our curve was in two dimensions, well, that's parametric curve. And we saw a parametric curve. So this is, I want to say 11.4-ish, 11.3, somewhere, somewhere back in chapter 11. We did length of curves in two-dimensional space, and they were called parametric curves. So length, did we use L for length? Yes. I think I probably did. Integral, you have to figure out what A and B are. They're going to be T values, and it's going to be square root. X prime T squared plus Y prime t squared dt. So there wasn't much else going on beyond that. So how do you think this extends to three-dimensional space? Yep, add another term, z prime squared, you add it in. So how does this extend to four dimensions? Add another one, take derivatives, square it. And another one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I could write that, this down in three dimensions, although it's not very exciting. It looks almost exactly the same. So what I'm going to do instead so we have our original, I should write down what our curve is. So of course here we had r of t is our function, our x function, xt comma yt. And our prime of t, of course, is x prime, oh, I almost wrote prime x, x prime. Can I just be lazy and go x prime, y prime? 
Okay, one yes, sounds good. All right, so there's derivative. Also known as the, uh, you'll get the tangent at whatever t value. This is the last question on your quiz. Take derivative and plug in pi over four, whatever value I gave you. Negative pi over three, yeah. That was basically all you did. So that's r prime t. What is the magnitude of r prime of t? Oh, that's very familiar in the arc length, isn't it? Oh, look at that. It's right there. So, in higher dimensions, whatever dimension you're in, we're just going to take the derivative, take the magnitude, and integrate it. So we can write a very compact formula in n dimensions. And it's going to look like magnitude r prime t dt. And that will be whatever dimension that I want. So if I'm in three dimensions, which will be the most common problem that we'll solve or work with, it'll look like x prime squared plus y prime squared plus z prime squared square root. But this is really nice because I don't have to assume it's a certain dimension. This is for any n-dimensional uh, curve. So this is the arc length. So this is for a fixed a and b. I'm going to change a letter. So this was arc length of curve r of t with t in the interval a, b. So that's nothing new right there. So you get your curve, just take derivative, and then magnitude. So I'm now going to write, so this is constant A to another constant B. Uh, you could measure going backwards, and if you walk from your house to the campus, and then you walk back home, unless you take a different path, you better walk the same distance. Or else you're probably not at your house, or you didn't take the same path, one of the two. So doesn't matter on this one if I swap A and B doesn't matter which way you went you better get the same number out of it normally we get negative but if you think about the way this works you're not going to get negative here uh, mainly because you could think of this as absolute value Wait, is that true you won't get negative So you're integrating always positive values or zero if you stop along the way. No, you actually will get negative if you swap the values. You're integrating. There's always going to be a pos uh, zero or more for each t value. You're never going to get negative magnitude. But if you take a break, you could get zero if you're not moving for five minutes. Uh, but if you do change the two around, b and a, you will get negative. What I want to do, though, is not worry about that. I want to go from some t, initial t value to a variable endpoint. So I'm going to write arc length of same curve, r of t, from t0 to regular t. So t0 is fixed, and t is going to be the variable. It will change. So it's pretty easy to write down. Just a and b turn into t naught and t. But we have a slight problem. What is wrong? So if I go back up here and get a little more explicit, we go from t equals b 
or from t equals a to t equals b. Those are t endpoints. So I'm going to do the same thing with the one we just wrote down. So we're going to start at t equals t naught and end when t equals t. We have too many t's everywhere. So what I'm going to do is make a dummy variable. So the instead of this t inside, I'm going to erase it in a minute, put a different letter in there. Which also means I need to erase this t, and this t, and this t. So all those t's need to be a different t. Can't just write them in bold forever. So I'm going to use the Greek letter tau. It's a Greek t. So the t's that I just drew in bold right there, those are called dummy variables. So they're not called dummy variables because they're stupid. They're called dummy variables because it doesn't matter what letter I put there. For example, R is a bad letter, D is a bad letter, and T is a bad letter because I'm already using those. So I could put any other letter in I want. So I'm just going to use tau. If you really want to, you can put X's in if, instead. So those are dummy variables. Well, there's really just one. It's a dummy variable. I'm going to change. to tau. How do you write tau? It looks like a pi with one leg. Well, depending on how you write pi. It's got a, it's a squiggle. What do they call that on the keyboard? Tilde. Tilde. Isn't, isn't tilde? I feel like that's... Oh, that's a carrot. That's a carrot. So, oh, so it is a tilde or tilde or til something? Tilde. All right. So I'm going to use a tau instead. So we're going to get r prime of tau d tau tau equals t0 tau equals t and this is a function of t. And this is what we call parameterized arc length. So it's called a dummy variable because it doesn't matter what letter I put in there. So think of crash test dummy in a car. It doesn't matter which dummy you pick up off the shelf and put in. As long as they work, you'll pretty much get the same information out. Oh no, it's time to go. Oh, I was just about to get good.